got Taylor Swift as his girlfriend. So he's got to be in the game, man. Put me in the game. Put me in the game, coach. I got to prove my worth. Come on. I got to keep proving my worth to Taylor Swift. Do you know who my girlfriend is? Do you know who my girlfriend is? Coach, do you know? Coach Reed. My girlfriend is up there with my mother. My girlfriend is up there with my family, and she's Taylor Swift. The Taylor Swift, the one all the way at the top in the spotlight, bigger than life. You've got to put me in the game because if you don't put me in the game, I'm not going to be worthy of her love, or I think I'm not going to be worthy of her love. It's not true. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is transforming psychology into behavior, which is the definition of acting as put by the famous Ilya Kazan, brilliant, one of the founders of the Actor Studio. Hello, everyone. This is, hello, everyone. This is Miha Ella with Art of Experiencing. I cannot believe it's been such a long time, more than six months since my last episode. I've been waiting for the right moment to come back and do another episode. As with anything, when you stop doing it, you lose the confidence, you lose the knowledge, you lose the drive, and you start to question yourself if you even have anything else to say in regard to what the podcast is about. As you know, my podcast is always from the perspective of an acting teacher, from the perspective of acting in trying to analyze behavior, comportment of people as if they were characters, as if they were actors playing characters. The things that were going to take me back to do this episode, I had no idea what they were going to be. Has anybody watched the Super Bowl? Have you guys watched the Super Bowl? I have. Do I understand it? No, I don't. Football, the football with the legs, with the feet, the European football, the one that I knew to be football growing up. So this American football, I don't understand the sport. But I was watching as so many people watched, not only for the sportsmanship and for the curiosity of who's going to win and who's not going to win, but much more because of the relationship that's going on for the last couple of months between Taylor Swift and the Kansas City Chiefs player, Kelsey Travis. Travis Kelsey. Travis. Travis Kelsey. Is that his name? I think that's his name. Travis Kelsey. As I was saying, my show, my podcast and YouTube channel has to do with my understanding of behavior from an acting perspective. And I always look at the people that I'm going to analyze, no matter their sportsmen, actors, people in everyday life, events that happened within the last week. The biggest event of the last week was the Super Bowl between the Kansas City Chiefs and the San Francisco 49ers. I'm sorry to the family in San Francisco for losing. I became one of those people who was so intrigued to watch the Super Bowl, which I had never done before, to watch it from the beginning to the end. Because of the whole crazy relationship between one of the Kansas City Chiefs player. Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift. I'm watching it and I'm wondering why is the whole world so infatuated with their relationship? First of all, I think because we all want to have the hope that there is a fairy tale that can happen to any of us. I think it's the hope that relationships work. I think it's the hope that two good looking people, both of them at a level in their different careers, They've worked hard to get to where they are, the top of their game, and to have these two people come together and to have a chemistry, to fall in love. All of us to be able to see all of that on display is something that is like watching a movie. And that's why we go to watch movies. That's why we engage and we identify with actors who portray characters in films and TV shows and reality TV shows with real people. We want to applaud. We want to see beautiful relationships finish with a great 
fairy tale ending reconfirm we can have the same proven by other people it's confirmed by all these people so we want to cheer them on through them without even consciously realizing we're hoping that the same thing in our lives no matter the status or no matter the success our main stories we can have the same thing so i was watching i was never a fan of taylor swift i don't know her music very much i just know pretty much the general story that she has which is she's worked very hard from a very young age where she's attracted a lot of fans i know that she uses her personal turmoils and obstacles that she's had to overcome with relationships with her life with growing up in the public's eyes in her work, in her music, and that's really very relatable to her fans. I've seen her on television during the acceptance of different awards that she's received. The most recent one was the one at the Grammys. There was a lot of discussion why she was not recognizing Celine Dion, who was the uh, legend to hand her the Grammy that she won when Celine Dion came out. It was such a welcoming from the entire audience when she came on the stage. Taylor Swift received her from the audience before it was announced that she was the winner of the Grammy for that category. But then when she went on stage to accept the award, she did not have any kind of hello to Celine Dion or she didn't make any mention of her, not even, you know, said thank you for handing me the award. So there were a lot of views on that too. There were like different views. One was that she was so nervous in the moment because she couldn't believe that she was actually receiving this award. And she was so taken by the emotion. She didn't even realize that that was happening, that she didn't thank Celine Dion. Right thereafter, her PR, I think, understanding that that's not going to look good for the fans out there there was a picture that came out backstage with Celine Dion and Taylor Swift to show the rest of us watching you know everything is okay don't make a huge big deal out of it the PR you know they had to repair the situation immediately the thing that I noticed when they were showing a couple of clips and I've been a little bit more interested in her behavior and watching her on television, they then started talking about the relationship that she's had with Travis Kelsey. Kelsey is the last name, I believe. Kelsey, Travis, Travis Kelsey. They were talking about how they came to know each other. Travis Kelsey, I realized he has a podcast with his brother, who's also a very known football player. It's a family podcast. What's kind of happening since he started to be with the biggest star in the universe, biggest singer, Taylor Swift. Not to say that he hasn't reached a very successful platform in his field as a football player, but he's not at the same level, in my opinion. If you were to put them together and to say who has reached the top between the two of them, I would say that you know, Taylor Swift. I was trying to figure out, you know, how this relationship is going because everybody seems to be so much into their relationship. They don't want anything to go wrong. They're expecting for them to have a long, happy romance for the rest of their lives. Oh my God, acting is such an opportunity. Acting and studying acting and having done it for so long gives me the opportunity to be able to understand behavior and characters, why they do things. Also to be able to put myself in the shoes of the characters of other people as an acting coach, because I have to work with actors and we have to come up with so many different options in the choices that we make to make complex, bold choices in overcoming the obstacles, obtaining the objective for the character. So I started watching the whole couple of last days and last week, because that's what I'm kind of focusing on. And then I said, what's going to bring me back? What's going to bring me back? All of a sudden, I'm thinking it's going to be Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey. I did not know that this player existed. I had no idea who he was. I don't know American football. So as I was watching them, As I was watching them again, as if they were characters from that perspective, 
because I don't want there to be misunderstanding that I know anything. I don't know anything. I'm just talking from my personal experience, from an acting perspective, what my opinions are and my interpretations are of this relationship from what I've seen so far. So I'm watching the Super Bowl and I'm watching Taylor Swift. She's in the audience. She's in the audience. She's one of the spectators. She's in the best place of the arena. I believe she was with some um, friends and I think it was also the family of uh, Kelsey. To see her become a fan, the same way that other fans are fans of her when they go to see her concert, shows such an innocence and such a vulnerable state that she's allowing herself to be in. And I think that's one of the attractions because she doesn't understand. I think that for her is very difficult to understand because she became very popular and very known from a very young age. So for her to be on the other side of the coin, so she's not the adored, she's not the one that everybody's wanting to take pictures with. She's not the one that everybody wants to be around. She's not the one that cameras are flashing because they want to capture every move and every traveling that she does and everybody that she's with and all the people that she's in relationships with this has changed completely because now she is on the other side of the fence she's the one looking up to someone where until now everybody else is looking up at her the responsibility that one has when someone is looking up to you as the adored one as the symbol of what they want to achieve in their life is a wonderful one but at the same time it takes a lot of work to maintain that level of success because the responsibility that you have even without thinking about it is enormous so I think for her to kind of release that and to let go of that when she's going to watch the football games but now the boyfriend she's able to just be herself without the fame even though the fame comes with her but she's herself without the responsibility of having to maintain that level of of uh, stardom you know level of success it's almost like she can let go for a little bit and just be a private person who's adoring another human being. So she's one of the fans that's applauding. She's no longer the one that has to prove herself. Now she can give support and she can help another person, which is the player, Kelsey. Now she can be the one that can be supporting another person, the love of her life at this point, her boyfriend, who is adored by the fan. Now she becomes the fan who's adoring him on top of the fact that she has feelings and there's chemistry. I think her in the spectator's shoes, the way that she was behaving when anything was happening on the field, having to do with her boyfriend, all of the different things that the Super Bowl was, she was reacting as a little girl would. She was such a little girl and she was really moment to moment having reactions to everything that was happening and she was so attentive the whole time. And then at the end was when the Kansas City Chiefs with her boyfriend won the Super Bowl. She drank the whole drink that she was drinking. She was playing this character who is drinking the alcohol and she's putting it back on the table like one in one sip and she makes those gestures from the outside they look like they would be of someone who is this character who is not innocent a character who knows life and who's lived life and who's been on the bad side of the track because she's done the drinking and she's done the partying and the way that she wants to show the world that she's putting that drink back after she's downed it down in one sip the innocence and the not knowing how to do it with conviction you can tell from that behavior which is that little tiny behavior the way that she puts that drink on the table in front of her in the tribune where she is and you can see that she's trying so hard to prove that she's got so much more life 
when it comes to understanding relationships, when it comes to understanding what it's like to be with a bad boy, because, you know, if you look at this guy, if you look at a football player, he's completely so much more advanced in the way that he's experienced life. Advanced in the sense of not better than her. That's not what I'm saying. But he's been through a lot more. He's much more of a bad boy than she is a bad girl. I don't know if that makes any sense. But that's what I'm getting. So I'm getting that she's loving this part of him that I don't think she's had until now, even though she's had so many relationships and she's sang about him and she's put him into her art and her songs. That's why people love her so much because she's not afraid to reveal her personal life. But I think with Cassie, for the first time, she's the innocent girl that she never really got to be or got to be, but she could never be it privately because she was very famous from a very early age. Now she's got this bad boy player, player meaning football player, who's been through a lot, who likes himself to be in the spotlight. I mean, do you see how much he likes to be in the spotlight? And then to have her, the biggest star in the world, the biggest star in the world, from his level and i'm not saying that his level that he's achieved on his own with the support of his family which is very wonderful he keeps bringing his brother into it and the help that he got from his brother who is also a player and is a family oriented man from what we understand showing his mom on his podcast the families around even at the game the mother and taylor swift came together there were some other games where Taylor Swift was looking at his mom who was next to her crying when they won another game and Taylor Swift went to give her a hug because the mother was crying so that shows you how Taylor Swift is so appreciative of him and his whole family it's almost like she's the one that's seeing herself as being the lucky one and I'm not saying she's not but I think she's looking to be the one that's there for someone like I said, she's trying to be this grown-up now who's dating a tall, big man who's a player and who's got a career and he's macho. I know I shouldn't use that, but he's manly and he's tough and he protects her in the way that they physically walk around. He's always protecting her. I think she loves that support. But at the same time, she feels like she can support him in a way I don't think she could have done with others that she was with before. She's supporting this big guy, this football famous player. I don't know if you guys listen, but from what I understood, when the game was over and they won, when the Super Bowl was over, there was the big moment of Kelsey going to meet Taylor Swift and she had come down on the field. There was this big coming together and they were kissing. She's the one that embraced them with so much, with everything, with all her being. She was the one that was embracing him and she was holding tight onto him. I think she was saying to him, I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud. He said, I love you back and forth. They were saying, I love you. But then she was the one that said, I've never been so proud ever, ever. So I think he is needing that so much especially to have that come from somebody of her caliber again because she's much above in her career than where he is in his career there's no comparison in my opinion so for him to have this amazing worldly star that everybody knows and knows her songs for her to say, I've never been prouder, ever, ever, ever. And she keeps confirming him, confirming him, confirming him. Having seen just some documentaries about his life, you know, he's gone through a lot of things. He's been on the wrong side of doing things and he had to rebalance himself up, get back on the right track. So I think the need to be in front of the cameras for him is so much more than any other football player and I think one of the reasons that he wanted so much to be with Taylor Swift because he was the one that attempted this whole coming together with her the reason why he wanted to be with her is because he wanted to go to the next level of his 
spotlight. That's just my opinion. And I'm not saying that all the other things are not true. I'm not saying that he doesn't love her. I'm not saying that there isn't chemistry. I'm not saying that what the world is seeing where they just love the two of them together and they think they're perfect for each other is not what that is. But from watching some of the specific little things between them and then watching them separately, Taylor Swift doesn't have to have someone to bring her up as the spotlight goes. She doesn't need anybody because she did that on her own with the help of her team and everybody else that supported her throughout the years. I'm not saying, of course, she has to have a team of people who have put her there, but she doesn't have to have somebody else as a partner to give her that. And she never had to. She already had it. She made it herself from a very young age. For him, he got to where he got to, which was already wonderful as a football player but I don't think that he got to the level where he is now with her just on the merit of his game. I think he knew that he needed someone else. He loves the spotlight. He loves it because you can see when he is in front of cameras, he's always making a point of being the one that center attention. He did the same thing I felt during the Super Bowl. And I'm sure everybody watched it because so many more people watched it. The whole little aggression that happened with the coach this is from cnn it was a footage that quickly became a meme but kansas city chiefs head coach andy reed left off his pack with tight end travis kelsey during the team 25 22 super bowl win over the san francisco 49ers anger that reed had taken him out of the game during the first half kelsey pushed the 65 year old so hard on the sideline that the chiefs head coach momentarily lost his balance while the tight end continued to shout in his face. Kelsey was eventually pulled away by teammate Jerick McKinnon. He keeps me young, Reed, the coach, left on CBS post-game show. He tested that hip out. He called me off balance. Normally, I'd give him a little bit, but I didn't have any feet under me. I feel that the way that he's playing it, the coach is playing it this way because he doesn't want to make a huge thing out of it. But I feel that if he weren't the same situation and the game would not have been at such a level of the Super Bowl, the relationship between the two of them have brought so much more money to the game. I think this would have been looked at as more of a very aggressive moment that Kelsey had with his coach. I felt really just viscerally reacting to it when I was watching it. I was sitting on the couch with Jeremy and I even said to him, I don't know if he was looking at the TV or he was reading because he tends to do that. And I looked at it and I thought, oh my God, is this happening now in the moment? Or is this from like a previous game that took place some, I don't know, weeks ago or I don't know, a different year. I couldn't believe that it was actually happening. And then I thought, of course it's happening. Do you know why Kelsey would do such a thing? Not knowing that he had other aggressive moments during his career. I didn't know much about him, like I said, until this week. But I said, of course he's going to do that. Why is he doing that? He's doing that because of everything that I just talked about, in my opinion. Again, this is just my opinion, my interpretation. I feel that the reason why he went to his coach to say, put me in the game, put me in the game. Why am I not playing? And he even took his helmet, pushed the coach. I mean, the coach is like an older gentleman. You know, no matter how much he's trying to play this down, it's really awkward. You know, viscerally it affected me because I'm thinking of my dad. I'm thinking if I were to be bumped by one of my students, if I'm looking at something that I'm paying attention to, so much and I'm involved in reading and I'm not even paying attention to what's happening because the game is the most important which the coach was doing he was trying to figure out what the next play was going to be so he was really concentrated on how to continue to win the Super Bowl right and then Kelsey comes and pushes him really pushes him really pushes him uh, uh. Uh, and he was so not expecting it. He pushed him so hard that he lost his balance the way that he's actually expressing it here. He lost his balance because he was caught off guard. He could not believe it. And I cannot believe that that actually happened. But then I said, you know why it's happening? Because he knows, Kelsey knows that his famous 
star at a level of fame that only few people get to is in the spectator's seat. She's watching. She's watching. So he has to be proving himself to her even now because he knows that he's not at the same level instead of taking in the fact that he is at a beautiful level in the sports having overcome so many obstacles in his life having understood what it's like to go the wrong way and then decide that I'm going to turn my life around and I'm going to commit to what I want to do and what I love to do and it's about his legacy as he talks in some of the interviews but we as people we're not satisfied we're not thinking that we're worthy of someone else's love especially if that person we look up to and we consider and we know to be at a different level of status than we are so he needed to prove himself that's why he wanted to be in the game because he did not want his girlfriend his beautiful gorgeous famous star singer he didn't want her to be there and he was not going to be part of the game. He was not going to be part of what in his mind he believes is what is attracting her to him, which is his fame and his career. We don't think we're sufficient for just who we are. We always think we are attracted to other people or we are worthy if we become successful in our career if we make enough money if we are worthy of the spotlight if there's enough people that want to put us on the pedestal then we feel that we are worthy we're not feeling worthy unless we have that confirmation from the outside world the outside material things that we all want to have and we want to get and be able to maintain so I think he got even angrier than his usual self I think he was much more concerned of not being in the game and disappointing Taylor Swift and her fans because now it's not just about Taylor Swift now it's about her fans too so he's got to keep up with her and her fans and on top of that with his fans but I think he has much more to lose than she has to lose because everybody's watching him. She has so many more people on her side due to the number of fans that she's been able to, you know, maintain for so many years due to her talent, due to her hard work, due to her being smart in her decision making about her career. Good for her. But I fear there's this dynamic between the two of them where the chemistry is there and I hope that it's going to last. I feel that it's based a lot on the fact that he's the bad boy type of thing, was giving her the opportunity to be the bad girl due to the fact that she's combined with him in a relationship. She's putting the glass, sitting there, I'm done drinking. I'm the bad girl, Taylor Swift. You know, the behavior of someone and the way that we move and we allow our gestures to come out in observation of those gestures. When I see her trying to be sexy on the stage and she's gorgeous, she's beautiful, she's tall, wearing these sexy outfits when she's performing and now she's trying to do these moves that are sensual and sexual. And they don't feel like she gets them to me. I don't feel that she's there. I feel that she's trying. But she's not in it in the way where she feels comfortable with it. I feel she's attempting to want to portray that side of herself. But she's not comfortable with it. She's not dropped into it. You know, she's not dropped into like, here, I'm going to be sexual today. I just feel that the innocence that she has, which is so beautiful to watch. I'm not saying there's something wrong with that, but I feel that there's this inner conflict that she has with herself where she's wanting to give more to her fans, a different part of herself, the sexuality, the sensuality. And now having this player who's this guy who's got all of it and he's walking it and he's kind of loving the spotlight and he's walking with his sparkly suit to the Super Bowl psychology into behavior that's what it gives me when I'm watching 
it gives me that. Put me in the game. So he was put in the game. So when the Super Bowl is won and their quarterback, the famous Patrick, that shows you how much I know about football. I'm not talking about football, but their famous quarterback who is brilliant. When the Super Bowl was won in the... Um, Overtime. I mean, of course, he had something to do with the winning of it. And I'm not saying that he didn't. But I feel like their quarterback, the famous, what's his name? Jeremy. Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes. The one everybody's looking up to because he's been able to achieve this Super Bowl second or third time. I don't even know exactly when the winning happened. Again, Kelsey was making his way towards the podium. He wants to take the spotlight. So when the quarterback was there with his wife and children, he was very humble in the way that he was accepting the victory. He was talking about the whole team, contributing to it, talking about his coach and all of the things that he said. Then Kelsey comes and he always has to do more. He's always having to steal the spotlight. He's having to go, yay, Las Vegas. He's going into the song, Las Vegas, you know, watching a Taylor Swift, kind of watching him. And she's smiling because she's so proud to call him her boyfriend. That's what I was getting. At the same time, she didn't want to reveal too much. She was kind of trying to keep a straight face. And then she was smiling again. This is before they meet and kiss. Extraordinary to watch, you know, because you see so much happening. It's so wonderful to be able to try to figure out what's going on and to do this analysis with these people, even though they're not actors, but to analyze them as if they were characters from an acting perspective. I think that's what I wanted to talk about this week. This was the biggest thing that happened. So what else am I going to come back with if not with the Super Bowl? Yeah, so that's what I think. I think that he's trying so hard to prove himself, but good for him. I'm not saying that he's not kind to her. I'm not saying that he's not there to protect her because we can see from a lot of the pictures of the two of them, he's always very protective of the way that he holds her and guides her to walk and all of that. The fact that she's so taken with him, she can be a little bit, without the responsibility on her shoulder of having to maintain that success and that spotlight and that perfection. Even though she talks about what it's like not to be perfect, even though she's one that's kind of revealing a lot of what she goes through in her art and her music, I still feel that there's a lot of facade, especially with this new kind of thing that she's trying to do with, I'm going to be the not-so-innocent Taylor Swift. Now I have this other character as if, they were characters who's going to help me do that because he knows what it's like to guide me in that direction. I'm the bad girl. I'm going to be not so innocent. I think it's so cute to watch her try to tap into the bad girl side. I already said that I've been away for a long time due to some personal really hard times that I cannot believe I was able to we were able to overcome where my family's concerned I'm very grateful thank you so much thank you so much many kisses